Hey guys, it's Lauren Yates from Rave It Up here, and today we're going to be chatting over Skype with Australian actor Nikolai Nikolaev, who's making all us Aussies proud lately by working in America. His latest project is the new film Mile 22, which is produced and stars Mark Wahlberg. And today we're going to hear all about it. Nikolai, welcome to Rave It Up. It is a pleasure to have you on the show. How are you going today? Lauren, it's an absolute pleasure to be with you guys. I'm doing really, really well. well thank you for taking time out to have a chat to us because I know you're very busy. Uh, you know what? It's um. Uh, they say when it rains, it pours, and um, I uh, I'm, I'm I don't want to say I'm drowning, but uh, it's a good feel. I'm swimming, that's for sure, and I'm, I'm having a great time doing it. Yeah, you're taking some time out for us Aussies. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, look, I um, I'll take all the time uh, in the world for uh, for Aussie. I um uh, I miss home very much, and I'm based here in Los Angeles now, but. Um, I gotta tell you, my heart is always gonna be in my uh, hometown of Melbourne. And Sydney, however, is my second home, so it's okay. It's okay. I, <laughs> you can say Melbourne, it's alright, I don't, I'm not offended. <laughs> it's good to see as well with you being in America that you still have your Aussie accent. I do, I do. Every now and then I will, I will kind of go into my American just to kind of keep practicing it because, you know, it's tools of the trade here. But, um, um, and I, and I gotta say, it's really nice to hear an Australian accent as well. Um, bouncing right back at me yeah <laughs> do you know when i interview a lot of americans i'm like yeah i could really do with an australian now <laughs> yeah i'm gonna go hang out with some more australians exactly well you're welcome on the show anytime if you need to oh, chat you. to a fellow aussie <laughs> uh, since this is your first time on the show we'd love to get to know you a little bit better and i think we should start from the beginning you know to get a really good idea of how you made it to where you are today so you began acting at the age of 12 so was that always that what you wanted to pursue or were there other careers that you had in mind as well? <laughs> You've done your Google search research. Um, um, yeah, look, I started when I, I knew I wanted to be an actor when I was about 12 and um, I uh, then went about trying to get myself an agent. I knew that somebody needed to look after you, uh, you know, in my limited knowledge. And, um, and I enrolled in these things called the Victorian Youth Theatre. It was called VYT thinking that that was an agency uh, it, and it turned out to be not it was a it was a you know a, a kids theater group in melbourne and um i did that for about four and a half five years and loved ended up loving it uh, one of the teachers there turned out to be an actual agent who had his own agency and um a funny story i i remember walking up to him talking to like the cool kid you know the good looking one all the everyone wanted to all the fellas wanted to be him all the girls wanted to be with him you know that kind of thing and um, uh, and he was talking like, hey man, so why don't you come down and um, and you know, we'll, we'll tee up a, an interview and, and get you on tape. And I kind of went in there and I went, what? what what's going on? He goes, oh well, this guy uh, he's going to come down and um, you know maybe look at the agency. And I went, I want I want that. And uh, and I saw him kind of go, uh, okay. You know, I think it was just the you know the fact that I was in the right right uh, spot at the right time. I got uh, an invite to then join that agency. I did join that agency and. Um, uh, here we are 22 years later. Oh, congrats. It's definitely Thank about you. who you know, right? <laughs> yeah, well, yes, that's right. It, it, yes, it's very much that. And um, there's another one of create your own luck. Yes, and you've seemed to do that as well. <laughs> I, I try. <laughs> good, good. At over your career, you've been in Daredevil, Power Rangers, Jungle Fury, Six, Sea Patrol, and even the Saddle Club back in the day, which keep I remember. Going, <laughs> <laughs> Have you found the audition process a lot easier each time? You know what? I um, I try to... I think nerves are really good in that you it, it kind of makes you draw on something to, to go in there and smash it. And I think complacency is not good. However, there is a bit of a trick, I think. And I think the trick is to um, want it, do the work, prepare for it, and then throw it away and go in there with a... With a kind of like, I'm ready, guys, but um, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you what I've got because deep down, I think casting directors uh, want you to, to walk in and be the just smash it out of the park. They want you to win, you know, and they want to see your interpretation. They want you to, to come in with a fully formed character. Maybe they'll tweak it, but I think as a like from a from a business side, you're hiring the best. And if you hire the best, then you don't have to worry. You're like, okay, well they're gonna they're gonna take care of business as opposed to me. You know, if I'm, you know, like having to molly coddle somebody or, or talk them through it and blah, blah, blah. So I um, still get really nervous uh, when I, especially with these big projects, you know, you kind of, you know, uh, dancing on the big stage and, and you know that the uh, the role has been offered to 
any one of the A-lister guys. And um, that's always a kind of a an interesting thing of like, you have to be kind of like, until you're there, you kind of have to be, you know, the best of the rest kind of thing. Because again, it's a business, it's a game. And I saw one of your interviews with Hugh Jackman, and I cannot wait to work with that guy. Uh, but he, um, he's a bit of an inspiration. I think he, you know, he does the work, and he lets the work speak for itself, and he's a really nice guy, and there's no kind of pretentiousness and um, um, hope that people will talk about me like that as well. <laughs> well, if I ever sit down with him again, I will make sure to mention you. <laughs> please, please yes. do. Yes, that would be great. Well, I because uh, after that interview, I was like, you know, he's this... Hello. He's a celebrity that knows how to be a celebrity. Like, whenever you see him in the news, you never see anything bad written about him. I think he's one of those guys that um, is just naturally wired to be a great human being. And, uh, yeah, again, I try to, to be the same, I guess. Um, you know, like, because on a set, uh, there is so much money rolling every second. You know, like, um, I remember doing Sea Patrol. Um, which was one of the best jobs I've ever had. Uh, but, you know, we had a, a little bit of downtime because they're filming on a warship and whatever and, you know, go and sit on that boat for four hours waiting until it's your turn to, to get up and dance, you know. And um, um, and I remember working out that each second of Sea Patrol costs like $3.30 to, to make. So when you figure that out and you go, oh, wait a minute, I was 10 minutes late or that, you know, whatever, there was 10 minutes of the delays for whatever reason, it makes you think about the project in a different way. And you're like, okay, so this is, yeah. And um, and the, so the last episode of Six that I did in Vancouver, uh, that was $9.90 um, a second. So, you know, it, it's very, very quickly, um, you know, 10 minutes is like 10 grand or something. I, I can't, yeah, so you can do the math, but it's a lot, it's a, it's a ton. And, um, um, and so, you know, when people are forking out this money to make a, you know, a, a product, they want to be dealing with good people who, Yes, I can. Let's do it. You know, there are no problems, only solutions. And um, anyway, well, I think I started about. I think I started talking about that because of Hugh, and I, I could picture him. He's like, "Let's do this. Come on." Yeah, well, keep looking up to people like him because a good person to look up to. <laughs> <laughs> now, your latest project is the new film Mile Twenty Two, which is produced yeah. by and stars Mark Wahlberg. So firstly, yeah. how was it working with him? Is that another person you're looking up to now? Right. Okay. Um, first of all, Mile 22, the one word that comes to mind for the whole film is the word boom. It is insane. It's um, uh, non-stop action. I mean, him and Peter uh, Berg worked together on four films, uh, Lone Survivor, uh, Deepwater Horizon, and uh, The Patriot, uh, or Patriots Day, sorry. And um, um, they are an amazing team that, that just gel, and, and you can see how, like, they're trying to uh, create families, I guess. Again, because it's that shorthand, it's like, we can do it. How about we try this? And, the, you know, they're, they're kind of, it's a, it's a great atmosphere to work in. Um, uh, to answer your question about how was Mark Wahlberg to work with, I have a full disclaimer to make. I never met the guy, and it kills me. It kills me because I'm playing kind of like his counterpart. Um, I can't, I don't want to, to, I don't want to reveal too much, but I'm, Essentially, it's a cat and mouse game, even though he doesn't even know it. <laughs> and um, and stuff happens, uh, to say the least. So, um, so yeah, so when you're playing kind of the bad guy, often, you know, um, the guy at the end of the phone call will film elsewhere, uh, and, and their paths will never cross. So, the first time I got to see him was um, uh, at the Mile 22 premiere here in Los Angeles last week, which was epic. It was 80 meters of black carpet and... Um, I walked the gauntlet, as they say, you know, with all the media and stuff, and um, I got interviewed, and it was just, it was something else, like, to, to kind of be, you know, a guy from Melbourne, kind of chasing his dreams, and then standing there uh, with all these, you know, I've got like, Ronda Rousey right next to me, and then um, uh, Mark Wahlberg, um, a lot of the other crew, uh, Lauren Cohen, Conan, um, she was um, she was there, she was amazing. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, they're... They know how to handle this celebrity as well. Wasn't that interesting, though? It really gives us an insight because you've done this whole movie with him in it and you in it, and you've never met till the premiere. I know. I, know. <laughs> I mean, we look fantastic. Like, when we're, like, essentially kind of, um, I'm not going to say facing off, but um, when the penny drops, uh, it's great. Um, um, but, um, yeah, it'll have to be for the sequel. Yeah, it's great how they can put movies together without really having you all there at the same time. Magic of movie making, yeah. And I did hear that when you were given the script, it was like completely different draft than what you ended up filming and your character wasn't even in it. Like, 
Can you tell That's us right. some more about that? How did you tackle it? I got sent. I got sent my audition script as well as the Mile Twenty Two script, but I don't know where the stuff up happened. But I um, essentially it wasn't like my character from the the audition site wasn't even in this whole script. And I went, what's going on here? It, um, it, it was uh, it was a bit all over. I mean, I wasn't in there. And plus, that script was insane, but it was a completely different film, you know. And um, um, then they sent me the right version, which I think maybe the, it, it, had, it had gone through a couple of reincarnations. And um, I think maybe, yeah, I, I'm not too sure. It would be interesting to find out the backstory to that. Like, maybe it was like when Mark came on board, it was reimagined, you know, to, to, to become more equal kind of star power uh, film for him, as well as Iko Weiss, who is this uh, amazingly talented actor from Indonesia. Uh, and the fight sequences that he um, is the fight choreographer for are just next level. Cool. I'm so excited to watch this movie. <laughs> I just, yeah, be careful because my ears still hurt from the insanity of it. It was, it was just crazy. Well, I love action movies, so I'm ready to be on the edge of my seat the entire time. <laughs> that This is that. Well, your character is quite mysterious as well, so what did you do to get ready for this role? Did you end up researching some other mysterious characters, or...? You know what? Um, I didn't have time uh, to do that. I'm a little... Sorry, I, I just finished six in Vancouver, and um, you know how people talk about their crazy kind of weeks of their life or whatever. I was having one of those kind of crazy um, weeks because I was getting married in Australia uh, on New Year's Eve and it was already December. And so I, I wrapped up um, in Vancouver. I came to Los Angeles. Um, uh, that was, sorry, I wrapped on a Tuesday, oh, sorry, on a Wednesday. Came to Los Angeles on the Thursday. On the Saturday, I flew up to San Francisco for my God's, godson's uh, christening. And then on Sunday, I left to go to Australia for wedding preparations, right? Um, for a week, I, I kind of um, said hello to my family and like, all right, guys, and we because we were basically creating our own wedding venue. And then I flew out that at the end of that week to Los Angeles to then go to Atlanta, film this for two days, come back to Los Angeles, and then come back to Australia to keep going with wedding preparations. So, like, it was it was insane. And what I can tell you is that. Um, I didn't sleep. I was about to say, you would have been exhausted. Yeah, yeah. For the, for the two days of filming, um, both nights of filming, I slept for two hours each night. I, I, I don't know, 4.30 came around, or f yeah, it was 4, 4.30 or something, and I had a 6 a.m. pickup. Um, and I'm going, man, you need to get to bed. This is your big Hollywood movie. You can, you've got to be, you know, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. And I was, like, working myself up into a frenzy, you know, and um, um, finally collapsed. And, um, but, and yet, during the day, you would never tell that I was tired. I was just firing on, on adrenaline, uh, adrenaline, basically. It was a great experience. Incredible. Yeah, you really did not have time to research mysterious characters or anything like uh, that. Yeah. I, um, um, look, these eyebrows, they're doing something very mysterious just by default. So um, uh, Slash looking evil and brooding. And um, um, so, yeah, I kind of um, you know read the script, uh, figured out what I was going to do, and then pretty much forgot about it until a day when I you know switched it on. I'm surprised you even have time to memorize the script. <laughs> Yeah, and it was a very convoluted script as well. So, um, uh, yeah, but we got through it. <laughs> well, I have respect for you. Good job. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that um, all the hard work pays off. I, 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 from what I'm hearing from people, they, are, yeah, it's a very, very cool. Um, again, action-packed roller coaster ride for uh, for people just to kind of. Uh, have their uh, senses assaulted by this film it's amazing so i think the big question now because you've now worked on this movie and you've worked on heaps of tv shows do you prefer working on movies or tv shows you know what um so again i only did two days of filming on mile 22 and yet I'm, i keep coming back in the, you know in and out of the film like thanks to editing and stuff um i gotta say like filming a tv series like sea patrol or or six i mean that that takes you know, five, six, seven months to do because you're doing, you know, 13 episodes. And um, I, look, I live and breathe to be on sets. I um, I just love the whole world of, of kind of people, um, like a huge mechanism and you're a cog in that mechanism and you got to kind of, you got to, you know, bring it, you know, and kind of everyone's getting ready. Everyone's, you know, kind of doing their jobs and then action and you're on and you got to kind of, um, again, yeah, bring it for everyone's hard work to be worth it, you know. And so, yeah, um, the same goes for films. However, on a series, you're just doing it for way longer. So, uh, you know what? I'm going to do both is what I'm saying. Yeah, no real preference. You love both. That's, That's right. good. That's right. <laughs>
If Hugh Jackman is doing a film, I'm there. If he's doing a TV series, I'm there. Okay, put it that way. <laughs> I'll keep you updated. <laughs> And for this film as well, you also gave suggestions to the director, Pete Berg. So, does that mean in the future, maybe you might be working behind the camera as well? Bit of directing? Look, okay, so that guy is um, is a dude. First, like, it is his show, and um, there is no doubt about it. He knows what he wants, and he's kind of, you know, um, he knows, he gets it, and then he opens it up. He's like, surprise me, guys. Like, And so his camera crew, there's three of them that are, that are filming simultaneously, and I, I've never been on a set where the the team is is kind of mm, the best way I could describe it is like water, like liquid. They just they're just flowing around each other. It, it is it is an amazing kind of I'm not going to say chess game, but they're just you know they're they're, they're moving around and they're capturing different things. And uh, and Pete actually told me he goes uh, Nico, uh, I think you should do something with um, I think you like because we're watching these monitors uh, trying to to kind of um, target someone. And I um I had this realization because there's another character in the film who does stuff with his hands. Don't want to spoil it again, but um, it's kind of like a meditation thing, you know. And uh, and I, I kind of walked up to Ben and I was like, Pete, what's the thing that he does? And um, um and he goes, I'm not going to tell you because you're going to do it. And I went, Yeah, I will. And then and, and he um he goes, No, and he, he dismissed me for the second time that day. He's like, I don't not go away. And then he, he, he like stops me, like I was maybe five meters away. He goes, that's the best idea of the movie because I think he needed to, to process it for a second. He goes, get back here, you know, and, uh, and, he, and he told me the, the, the thing. And um, you gotta, you got to kind of picture being like a, an actor on this huge film with this amazing dude. And, and, uh, and so to, for you to come up with an idea and for it to be taken and then finally make the, the film as well. Uh, it's a really cool feeling, yeah. Um, so I'm not going to say like I was, you know, telling Peter how to do his job. No way. I was just kind of like working together as a colleague, you know. Yeah. Oh, cool. Hopefully, in the future, that's something we can expect. <laughs> it's very rewarding. Yeah. Awesome. It's very exciting. As again, I cannot wait to see it. <laughs> Sorry, but to answer your question, behind the camera is on the cards. Yeah. Good. 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 Awesome. <laughs> Um, and what else is up next for you after this film? You know, I did see recently on Instagram that you were filming something in Paramount Studios in LA, or uh, probably can't share that with us. I don't know. <laughs> I can't talk about it. Just this. We just got to keep updated. We'll just keep following you on Instagram, and we'll just keep Thank updated. You, please, um, um, yeah, I sound like a douchebag, and I hate it. like all the Australians are like, hey. What's this bloody can't talk about it stuff? No, um, I, um, I, I just, I have a funny story about not being able to talk about things though. Last time I kind of, I was asked that by um, the uh, one of the journalists um, from Queensland, and she, um, she goes, "What's next?" And I said, "I can't, you know, talk about it." That project that I couldn't talk about was called Fargo. Um, it, it's based off a, a really famous movie uh, in the nineties. Yeah. And you played a drug dealer. I did. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Now the the reason why it says drug dealer, which basically means like there's no uh, like it's not a big role, <laughs> you know. Like usually the bigger the role, they've got like a name. You know what I mean? Jimmy or whatever. And uh, and so originally his name was Alexander, I think. And um, it was a much bigger role. That's why we agreed to do it. It was it was actually like this. It was supposed to be an LA actor pretending to be a Russian thug extorting money out of this guy, this poor, helpless guy, right? With his girlfriend, who was played by um, Francesca Eastwood, who is Clint Eastwood's daughter. So it was kind of, it was kind of cool to, uh, to meet her and, and find out, you know, you hear some stories about her dad and, and whatnot. Anyway, I digress. It was a much bigger character, right? And then they sent it through a script going, you know what, um, we just don't have the time and we have to, we've had to condense those five solid scenes that you have. And so instead of you being a, an actor in Los Angeles pretending to be a Russian thug, you're just going to be the Russian thug. And I went, uh, okay, it's still a really good scene. Let's, let's, um, you know, it was like a three minute, really a great, funny scene. We film it, hilarious. Um, the, the crew was laughing and uh, I flew up to Calgary. I stayed there for five days to, 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 to do this. Again, just funny how things work like that. And, um, and then when the, when the show came out, my, my my screen time on it was three seconds. Like like the that scene, that whole storyline was just chopped and disappeared, and um um and it came became a three second montage. So I feel like a real douchebag uh, going. I can't talk about it for essentially three second. Um you know blink and you'll miss me kind of moment. But it is you know I I've, I've signed things. <laughs> 
least another role for you. No job. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. Again, everything's experience, and here I am talking to you, amazing people, about it. You know, so it's uh... <laughs> awesome. I love the stories. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, I know this is a random question, but it was something I was thinking about when I was researching you. Your birthday is on the 26th of December, Boxing Day. Yeah. So does that mean yeah. you get double the presents at the end of the year? Uh, or? You know what? It depends from who, all right? Because you can imagine when you're, um, you know, 14, 13, whatever, eight, sorry, six to mid-teens, um, your friends... I'm going to say are pretty strapped for cash and um, um, and, and their parents are too because they're forking out for Christmas presents and blah, 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 blah. So when my birthday comes around, like, hey, buddy, here's one for that and that, huh? huh? And I'm like, thanks, guys. Yeah, and but, but I have an amazing family who um, who made a point of um, uh, separating the two uh, the two milestones. So, um, um, yeah. And also, you know, it used to be really hard when I was younger because everyone would go away like for summer holidays and whatever in Australia. Uh, but now the older I get, people are like, you know what, they've got their own families and stuff, you know, and and so they're staying in for Christmas. And uh, and so then the following day um, is, is happy days. They're all like, thank God, that's over. Let's go and have a great time for Nico's birthday. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very lucky. <laughs> Look at that, double the parties for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly, any excuse. And we are unfortunately getting to the end of the interview. It's been so much fun. Uh, oh. I know. But before we go, would you have any advice for the listeners who might want to follow their dreams of becoming an actor? Um, yeah, I do have the advice. Um, I was going to say don't do it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, um, I, I, I got some advice given to me um, when I was in Beverly Hills, of all places, about... In fact, I know when it was. It was um, September, I'm going to say, 20th of 2001 because... Um, September 11th had just happened in 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 San Francisco, yeah, sorry, in, in New York, and uh, and I was in San Francisco, and then I came down to Los Angeles, and it was a weird weird time in in America in general, you know. And I um, was in this diner, and and I met this old school PR agent by the name of Lee Salters, and he used to represent Barbara Streisand, uh, Michael Jackson, um, Frank Sinatra. Like old school, right? Anyway, and he um, um, he goes, "You want some advice?" And I was like, "Yes, sir." He goes, "Reach for the stars, but keep your feet on the ground." And uh, and I kind of went, "I think I can do that." I mean, I was naturally inclined to be like that anyway, but so it was just another kind of thing of you know, there, there are moments when you know you're on these multi-million dollar you know movies and and red carpet events and stuff, and um, um, if you're not careful, people can can let it go to their heads and and. Uh, it's um yeah it's an amazing industry but uh, it's a hard one and um people remember you like you're only as good as your last job so i think i think to be honest with you it's a weird thing like i don't think i even need to tell australians that because we're just who do you think you are you know like we're kind of uh you know the tall poppy syndrome kind of like it's um um we, we keep people grounded and um yeah but yeah look work hard um uh you know, make friends with people and be, you know, um, be as good as you can on set. Learn your line. I mean, somebody, I heard somebody say, learn your lines and hit your mark. You know, um, it's half the battle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, That's good right. advice. Thank you so much. And thank you for coming on Rave It Up. It was a pleasure talking yeah, to you. Really, I'm really honored to be uh, invited to the show. I um, um, Yeah, I can't wait to see, uh, you know, the, the interview and, um, and to... Uh, meet any of your fans that are out there because um, uh, it's funny, you know, the world is actually becoming smaller and, and so I meet people in LA from Australia, they're like, man, from Sea Patrol and, and um, yeah, it's, a, it's quite a quite a cool, uh, you know, kind of cool thing to, to have people who have watched you on, on work that you've done in the past come up and, and say how much they liked it. Uh, I don't think I've had anybody say they haven't liked it. But constructive criticism is always welcome. That's fine. I, uh, I'm not that's that's true. Touch wood, nothing uh, happens. But <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> well, I'd love to have you on again in the future. Hopefully, next time we can do it face to face. So, are you thinking of coming back home anytime soon? Maybe, pending uh, scheduling. Blah 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 blah. We'll see. Yeah, well, you're still making us Aussies proud over there in America. So keep it up. <laughs> but we'll just keep in contact, and when you are over here again, just let me know, and we'll we'll do another interview. Fantastic, Lauren. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Well, I hope you all enjoyed today's interview. And if you'd like to check out any of my other interviews, make sure to visit our website, raveituptv.com. All the podcasts and videos are there for you to enjoy. But for now, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.